hello hello my name is Callista and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition in the last episode we were on Nodacrux there is an emergency distress beacon going off somewhere however we are also aware that Exogeny were doing some experiments here there are Thorian creepers just roaming the countryside which is uh, not good not good at all However, before we go and deal with them, we have a mineral deposit to grab. Where are you? Where are you? You're somewhere up here. Aha, right there. Don't mind if I do. Cobalt, lovely. Well, hey, light metal surveyed. You have successfully surveyed a large deposit of cobalt. Lovely. Lovely, jubbly. Oh, pardon me. Come on, let me up. Let me back. Okay, now I'm... I think there were only two deposits here. I think there were only two. So I'm... I'm okay to go after the main mission do that and let's it'll probably be easier to just go down the mountain and take the pass again oh oh come on up and out up and out oh oh careful 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 don't flip and there we go now where where was the pass where was it? Okay, right there. You know, this would be a really good site for an ambush. This would be a really good site for an ambush. If the Thorian creepers were so inclined. Unfortunately, they're pretty much just mindless husks, so we grand, but but if they were slightly sneakier I see you up there. I see you. then let's go deal with this let's go clean up exo jenny's mess again God, gotta love those you gotta love those pod things aren't they aren't they beautiful aren't they just stunning a uh, yoink yeah look at that look at that Ugh. no one is stuck everyone is with me yes good stuff Get your gun out, lass. Head now, up. Jesus. Here's my strategy. We're just going to wait for them to come to us. One left, I think. Two left, hi. No, I th yeah, I think he's dead. I think we got him, Commander. Hey, nice. Excellent. Excellent. Lovely jubbly. Okie doke. Now then. Now then, now then. 
Let's have a quick wee run around for Luke. You can put that away. You can put that away. It's fine. It's fine. As long as the Thorians are dead, you reet. Mm, there's sometimes, there's sometimes Medigel in this back area, but not here, apparently. Boo. How dare. How dare. Much offence. Would like more Medigel, please. Okay, let me in. Uh, you, you can wait there. You can wait there. Yeah, whilst, whilst you're cowering in the back, I'm just going to take all of your shit. Don't mind me. I'm keeping my eyes peeled for any of the Colossus stuff. That's that's the stuff I really like. Wehe. Oh, hello. That is that is not a name I have seen before. Well, hello there. The next time I do party inventory, I am, I'm gonna have to check that. Rescuers? Oh, thank God. See, I told you somebody would come to investigate that signal. My name is Dr. Ross, chief exogeny researcher at this facility. We've been trapped in this room for days. We're almost out of food and water. You got here just in time. If this was any other research team, like let's say it was an independent research team that had been contracted out, I think Naomi would be very sympathetic. But it's not. This is Exogeny. She said, I'm the chief Exogeny researcher here. I mean, we went to the trouble of taking out the Thorian. We went to all of that trouble. Fidan killed himself rather than, you know, be a, a slave to the Thorian. Who knows how many more colonists died before we rocked up? And what did they do? They transported some of the husks away. If this was any other research team, I think Naomi would be sympathetic because, you know, maybe maybe they didn't realize with what they were being contracted to do. Maybe they didn't realize it. However, this woman will know. This woman will know. Not so fast. First, you're going to tell me why this place is overrun with Thorian creepers. How do you know about the Thorian? Yeah, because we've seen it. I know what Exogeny was up to. I saw what they let the Thorian do to those colonists, so I destroyed it. Our secret's out then. No point in my lying. You already know the worst. The creepers here were created using altered samples from the specimens on Pharos. We discovered a way to turn them into docile, obedient servants. Everything was going fine until a few days ago. Then all the creepers suddenly went berserk. Only a handful of us made it back into the safety of this room. It does serve them right. It does serve them right. However, we have more questions. Why didn't you send a clear message asking for help? All we had was that signal from the emergency beacon. This is a closed communications base. Exogeny was worried about someone on the project selling secrets to a rival firm or reporting our work to the authorities. We have no direct communication with the outside, only the emergency beacon. It sends a general distress signal to the Exogeny site on Pharos. They're supposed to send a team to respond inside of 24 hours, but it sounds like they had problems of their own. Any chance some of the other people at the base might still be alive? Hmm, I doubt it. Too many creepers out there. They never stood a chance. We're the only ones left. Any idea why they turned on you? 
Maybe there was still some kind of link between the Creepers and the Thorian back on Pharos. The Thorian was unlike any other life form we've ever studied. I can't explain how, but maybe when it died, it, it somehow set off the Creepers here. I mean, that would make sense. That would make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, we, we have no more questions. I've heard all I need to. Look, I know what we did here was wrong. I'll admit that. But it's over now. There's no sense reporting this to the authorities, right? And again, if this was any other research team, if this was any other research team, then Naomi would say, you know what, maybe they didn't realize what they were getting themselves into. Maybe Exogeny wasn't completely honest with them. Maybe they didn't know about Pharos. Okay, you can go. You're right, it's over. What would be the point? However, at this stage, at this stage, it's, it's like I said before, as long as you're not punching down, Naomi doesn't really care. If you're a mega corporation fucking over another mega corporation illegally, Naomi doesn't give a shit. But Exogeny was targeting colonists who had arrived there in good faith, not expecting to be turned into guinea pigs. And that's exactly what happened to them. And people died. And they're carrying on that research. We, we weren't told about that. We had to discover this. We hacked into their computer and we heard the distress signal. It's not like Exogeny said, hey, we, we took more Thorian creepers. We took them off world. Or we took samples from them and took them off world. You might want to go check up on them. See what's going on. Please, can you take them out? Because we can't. They were just like, oh, hopefully she doesn't find out about this. And we can have our little, you know, you know, Thorian Creeper project going on the side. I... This is about sending a message... I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. My speech is just like, please, why? Why? I've done this before. Why? Um... <laughs> This is about sending a message to Exogeny. This is about sending a message to them saying, hey, if you're involved in shady shit, I'm going to be there and I'm going to get you in trouble. Stop fucking over colonists. You want to do dangerous research. I just don't involve innocent people. You involved innocent people with the Thorian and then you took samples and brought it off world. Admittedly, Luckily, there aren't any colonists here. No innocent colonists died, but this is... I think this is a message to Exo Jenny. Just stop fucking with the Thorian. Let it die. Please, just let it die. You were in charge of this project. The safety of the staff was your responsibility. They trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Be reasonable. I didn't mean for this to happen. Besides, how does it help anyone if I end up in jail? Normally, Exogeny would have my back, but it sounds like they're going to have their hands full cleaning up the mess on Pharos. But I've got money. A nice little emergency fund I set up. It's yours if you let us go. Yet yeah, no. No. I just... You say, what what good would it do the victims if I ended up in prison? To be honest, here's the thing. Naomi doesn't really care about the scientists at this facility. Naomi doesn't really care about the scientists at this facility. They were all on Exogeny's payroll. They all knew what they were getting in for. Um, I think the reason why Naomi is doing this is because if she goes to prison, it will be out there that an Exogeny staff member was doing experiments on Thorian Creepers. But what's a Thorian Creeper? Oh, well, I'm so glad you asked. Here's all the information. It will be out there that Exogeny were experimenting on colonists. They can try and cover it up. They can try and cover it up. And I'm sure they would with their corporate lawyers. But it will be known that an Exogeny scientist was doing dodgy shit. It will throw some... Oh god, what's the word I'm looking for? My my migraine is not making this easy on me. Um Exogeny will probably put all of the blame on her. 
However, there will be there will still be residual flecks of shadiness coming back on them. People will look at them a little more skeptically than they did before. That's why Naomi is doing this. Under normal circumstances, she'd be more than happy to take the money, but y'all turned innocent colonists into guinea pigs. Y'all did that. And the company needs to be punished. The victims here deserve justice. I have to take you in. Uh, that's not going to happen. Open fire. Open fire! No. No, madam. No. Um, if you would be so <laughs> kind, not kind. There we go. Um, you do that. You do that. And we read! Like, it looks I was about to say does uh, does uh, Kaiden have him no um come on yeah I okay if you want to hide Exogeny's second-rate mercs proved no match for a trained Alliance Marine. With the last of the science crew dead, there's no reason to linger here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm gonna loot your shit Clear. now. Yeah, when when Naomi was saying I'm doing this for the victims here, I, I don't think she meant the scientists who died. They knew what they were getting in for. It's it's the victims back on Pharos that she cares about. Because let's be honest, are Exo Jenny really going to be held all that accountable? Probably not. This was a chance for them to be, you know... This was a chance for the, the company to face some sort of, you know, repercussions for their bullshit. Okay, yeah, that is everything. Good stuff. Okay, people, and we've already looted that room. Let's head out. Off to see what else this planet has in store for us. You know what, run. Move those legs, girl. Move those legs. And out we go. Everyone remember to put your, your helmets back on. The pollen will kill you. Okay. Now then, yeah, let's just head up to here. Which is this way. Okie dokie. Oh, pardon me, pardon me. Don't flip, don't flip. Oh, that was lucky. Is there, hold up, is there a path? Oh god, are we stuck? We're stuck. Wait, we're fine. Um, that, yeah, that is a convenient path. I will take that. I'll take that over trying to mountain goat my way through. Wee! Oh, hello. I forgot about you guys. I forgot about you guys. I, t I still don't know what you are. They have, they have such strange Secure little hands. Hand. Such strange, strange little hands. Okay, thank you kindly. I didn't think we could go straight through. I'll take that. And last but by no means least. Okay, yeah, you're kind of kind of in that direction. Yeah, look at them. Look at them, they have hands. Now let's let's avoid don't No I'm so sorry. I was I was about to say let's avoid running any of them over. I tapped it. I ta I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I t I feel so guilty. I feel 
so, so guilty. I, oh. Let us flee. Let us leave this place. Okay. This way. Up and over. I, knew, I wish I knew where I was going. I wish I knew. Okay, this this apparently is not what I thought it was. Excuse me, come on. Around, there we go. Yeah, what I'm thinking of was on the planet with the, um, the samples. The investigate samples mission. Okay. Okay. Excuse me, let me out. And a yoink. Turian insignia recovered. This escape pod is half buried in material that has been washed down from the mountains. Though it has obviously been here for centuries, the computer still has power. Linking in with your hard suit, you recover a batch of files containing data on the Thracia colony. Lovely. Lovely. And that, I do believe, is everything. So again, back, back to the Normandy. And over to... Matano. It's right there. Metallic asteroid. A metal-rich asteroid, radius 47 kilometers. Heavy metal surveyed. While scanning this asteroid field in the Matano system, you discovered a large deposit of platinum. Thank you kindly. Anything else there? Anything? Aha! Right there. Rocky Asteroid. This asteroid has an unusually sculpted and artistic appearance with many long sweeping curves. Radius 34 kilometers. Prothean data disk recovered. While scanning the asteroid field in the Matano system, you discovered a badly damaged chip. The recon team found no survivors on board, but they did find a Prothean data disk. Thank you. And I don't believe there was anything else that was unknown. No, okay. Let's start with you at the back. Supe. Supe has the composition of an ice dwarf planet, but is unusually large for such a body. It has a trace atmosphere of krypton and xenon. The, the frozen surface is dotted with deposits composed of potassium and light metals brought to the surface by cryovolcanic processes. Supe's ice surface was often used as a source of of potable or potable water by passing merchant vessels. Since the Alliance claimed the inner system world of Chaska, satellites placed in orbit automatically bill any vessel landing on the surface for the mass of water removed from the surface. Exogeny has had a difficult time keeping these satellites operational. They often, mi they often meet with accidents caused by impact with 
Yeah, I am reading this right. My brain, my brain is just, it, it's slowly turning into mush. They often meet with accidents caused by impact with jettison ship debris. Orbital period, 275.5 Earth years. Radius, 4,317 kilometers. Day length, 63.4 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 0.00 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, negative 216 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.25 G. Light metal surveyed. While scanning this planet, you detected a large deposit of magnesium. Thank you. Elapa. Elapa is a hydrogen helium gas giant with an unusual ruby color caused by contaminants in the atmosphere. The world has over 120 moons, one of the highest totals of all known systems. Once full development of Chaska's colony begins, a helium-3 refining infrastructure will be developed in the Elapa system concentrated on the large ice moon of Con Conaria. Orbital period, 74.1 Earth years. Radius, 72,820 kilometers. Day length, 15.7 Earth hours. Inti. Inti is a terrestrial planet with an atmosphere composed of ammonia and helium. Its surface is mainly composed of sodium oxide with deposits of magnesium. Its density is rather low, leaving the planet tide-locked to Matano. Inti is an unremarkable world, drawing little more than a cursory scan for surface pirate anchorages when Alliance patrols enter the system. Orbital period, 0.6 Earth years. Radius, 9,032 kilometers. Day length, 0.6 Earth years. Atmospheric pressure, 0.56 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 157 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.99 G. And Apo. A craggy world of ignatius and basaltic mountains, Apo is wracked by constant geologic activity. While volcanic hotspots are rare, continental plates are constantly piling up new mountains, subducting old ones, or causing slips, or causing slips along transform faults. Apo has a dense atmosphere composed of nitrogen and carbon monoxide. Due to the constant earthquakes and landslide activity, surface exploration is not advised. The rubble-covered wrecks of a half-dozen expedientary ships stand in mute testament to the planet's instability. Orbital period, 29.7 Earth years. Radius, 6,843 kilometers. Day length, 56.7 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 1.2 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, negative 116 Celsius. Surface gravity, 1.1 G. Lovely, okay. And Chaska. Chaska is a large but low density world, fundamentally similar to its inner neighbor Inti. Like Inti, Chaska is tidally locked to Matano. The same side always faces the sun, resulting in a scorching day side and a frozen night side. In the temperate areas around the Terminator, temperatures average around 30 Celsius. Combined with a nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere, this slender band of habitable terrain allows limited colonization by humans. Chaska's ring is unique. It appears to be, for lack of a better term, a massive piece of alien installation art. The rings are made of small pieces of synthetic material and are almost invisible from space. From the ground, they catch and scatter the light of Matano in picturesque ways. It is not known who created the ring or when. Chaska is very early in development, with little more than a few pioneer teams scattered across the surface. Information is being collated about native hazards and ecology, while a massive colonist recruiting drive is gearing up back on Earth. Colony founded at 2183, population 150, orbital period 1.3 Earth years, radius 8059 kilometers, day length 1.3 Earth years, atmospheric pressure 0.86 Earth atmospheres, surface temperature 62 Celsius, surface gravity 0.88 G. And I brought Liara and Garrus with me last time. Uh, 
Okie doke. And I am gonna bring this episode to a close right here. In the next one, we explore Chaska. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.